Tesla was ridiculed for nearly a century earlier. One of the real dangers of HARP is that we, have con that we concentrate with HARP in one very small area of the ionosphere. We create a lightning rod effect. We create a lightning rod that can distort the magnetosphere of the planet, which is the magnetic shield of the planet. Not only are you sending energy into the ionosphere, but you're providing a path for energy to come back down out of the ionosphere. The electrons and energy will come from all over the ionosphere to that one point, and it will strike the ground in a bolt that is a hundred times greater than any lightning bolt imaginable. Kind of like three or four Mount St. Helens volcanoes going off each second. The true power of HARP technology is not yet known, and there is no civilian monitoring agency. The possibility that HARP may be capable of enormous planetary disruptions, including weather changes, global warming, or even slowing the Earth's orbit by shifting the shape of the ionosphere, may tell us why Tesla suppressed the blueprints for this invention. He stopped his power shield defense project in 1905 because he realized that such a resonant system of five towers around the globe could cause a tremendous destruction of humankind. Not long after, Tesla's money runs out. His main supporters either die or sever relations. As his anonymity increases, he continues with even more esoteric research. He was very much concerned with being able to utilize the phenomenon of resonance to do certain things, not the least of which was to uh, destroy certain materials. And that was evidenced later on by that uh, experiment he did on you know, Wall Street where uh, the new building, steel building was going up and uh, he tried out one of his uh, resonators, nothing more than a, a mechanical vibrator that was battery operated, and set up a a resonance in the steel beams to the point where it kept building up like pushing a kid on a swing you know keep pushing a little push will take it a lot further every time and he almost brought the building down uh, scared the people who were working on it they thought they were having an earthquake and they went down and called the police and everything else tesla got <laughs> a little bit scared and picked up his equipment, <laughs> put it in his pocket, and went home. <laughs> he had one other unfortunate incident, which today we would laugh at, but was very serious at the time. He picked up radio signals from space. You know, we know today, of course, that uh, planets radiate uh, RF noise and so forth. But when he announced this, it, was, uh, it just caused a sensation, and all the scientists said immediately, what a kook, you know, what a idiot. There were rumors you went to Colorado Springs in order to contact Mars, is that true? I never intended to. However, I recorded certain electrical impulses of unknown origin, and these were repeated at constantly timed intervals. It's possible they were a kind of signal from space. And did you in turn send them a message? Ask the Martians that question. No more questions, please. They got to thinking, I'm sure, well, he's talking crazy now. He's feeding pigeons in the park, and he's got this crazy idea of transmitting signals to Mars. And Tesla is so advanced in his thinking, so sensitive and eccentric, that few of his colleagues understand his work. He is perceived as snobbish and overconfident. He was ostracized, I think, primarily because of his difference and because of his radical statements and because of his pronouncements of great systems. They didn't have the foggiest notion of what he was talking about. Nikola Tesla saw many of his inventions scrutinized, then adopted by the military. However, it becomes apparent that as a citizen of the planet, Tesla ultimately serves a much higher authority. He met Swami Vivekananda in New York City in the late 1890s. Swami Vivekananda was probably the first yogi to come to this country 
with Eastern philosophy and present it to the West. It was at Swami Vivekananda's lectures that Tesla picked up the Sanskrit terminology, prana, akasha, and the concepts of the ether that led him to determine or actually led him to a point where he could describe succinctly the physics of the universe, the physics of matter creation in this dimension.